Hi folks, we're back with Dr. Jan Prinz, a world leading research scientist in swimming biomechanics and technique analysis. Jan, thank you so much for being with us. Always a pleasure, John. Okay, we're excited to have you here. Um, we're gonna be here today to reveal the concepts behind acceleration and the latest ideas on how it works and how to apply it to swim faster. So today we'll be sharing some of our FM visuals. So here we go. And we're gonna be looking at the different dimensions right here. So the first dimension we have over here is called motion. So that's what you can normally see when somebody's swimming is just the motion, how they're, you know, how they're moving their arms, things like this. And we differentiate in our company between motion and movement. So motion to us are the things that you're doing with your head, your torso, your arms and your legs, and movement is you passing through the pool, passing forward. Now, the next step is we're looking at the pathway of motion here. And you can see that right here that we've done A0, A1, A2, like this around the pathway. And then we've input into that pathway, the hydrodynamics, how the water works inside there. And Jan, you, were, you and I were just talking before the show about how important that is. And we'll get into that for our audience. Okay. And today we're gonna to be looking at force and then we're gonna go back and take a look at how that hydrodynamics can be positively or negatively impacted, depending on what you do. Here we have next, so this is a force. Here we have the timing, and that's uh, how things are, are being put together and relating to each other, and then blending, which is everything all together, right? So everything combined. So Great. let's go ahead, and we're going to move over here into our pathway, and we're just going to make sure everybody sees and can see how the pathway is built. A stands for arms here, folks. So A0 is when your hand's out of the water, it's recovering, right? The above surface recovery. A1, when it's going in the water, that's the below surface recovery. So in, in something like the windmill freestyle, we wouldn't have much of the A1 if, if, if that would be uh, understood. And then, whereas in the common freestyle like this, you will. Then down here, we're gonna go into A2, which is the, what we call the gather, right? We're gathering the pressure field. A3, where you're pushing on the pre pressure, we call it the press. And then A4, which is the thrust where you're pushing off of that pressure field. And, and Dr. Prince has some amazing insight as to what's going on in these sections. And, and so we're gonna get his expertise today on that. So our next area we wanna go into is now starting to look at the force itself. And so when we look at the force, this is color coded. You can see A0 here has green, which is called setup, it's preparing. And you can see A1 has momentum, that's yellow. A2 is back to preparing. Now, when we're preparing like this, Jan, when we look at if you don't prepare well, and we were talking about this before in regards to the um, pressure fields, what can we see during that area in, in the pressure fields? If I pull that pressure field up for a moment for everyone to see, here's how the water is working here. And we're gonna move that into A2. Right, but, so let's talk right now the difference between what the pressure of a fairly average swimmer would feel compared to something an elite swimmer would feel. An elite swimmer, John, will be able to move their hands faster and still feel the pressure of the water. Whereas an average or not so average swimmer, they will not feel the pressure if they speed up too quickly. But the difference between a elite swimmer and a non-elite swimmer is that they look like they're moving their hands a lot faster, which indeed they are, but they're still holding the water. That's the difference. An elite swimmer can move their hands faster through the water and still maintain the pressure. So if we back this avatar up, and you can see now his hands on top of the pressure field. If he wants to pull, pull really quickly, he might slip off the pressure field, right? Or maybe put his hand outward like right. this. If, and, the, and the more advanced they are, the less likely are they are to slip because they will still maintain the pressure on their palms. Because they've refined this process more. Is that right? They're better at it. Exactly, their tactile sensations on their palms are more heightened. 
Okay, got it. So now you can see right here where they're getting that pressure and that's gonna be a big deal when they get to the next step. So right now, this a lot of times referred to as high elbow, we call it the paddle. So to, to try to reduce some confusion where they're getting on, on the front of the pressure field now. So they're manipulating their position before they push back. And right. what you're saying, if I understand Dr. Prince, is that the people that are, that are swimming faster in the water and the elite athletes are really great at getting into the right position so they can feel that water, whereas the other ones may not be as aware of it. And they're doing it quicker. That's why a lead swimmer can move their hands faster through the water, of course, but they're still holding the water. Got it. Got it. So they're still having that, that relationship there in, in, in our term. Exactly. Because if you, if you time the amount of time it takes for an elite swimmer to go from A1 to A3, mm -hmm. that'll be less time. But there's, they'll be maintaining pressure on much more successfully. An average swimmer or a post swimmer may do the same amount of time between A2 and A3, but they won't be holding the water as well. Got it. And then here, and dur during the A, and, and this is where it was such an interesting conversation we had. We're in, and if we go into the force section here, we're going into the next phase where the it's starting to turn blue. This is propulsion to us, which is a, a an opposing force. You're pushing backward and right moving forward off of these pressure fields. And then you can see it getting darker blue as you move back farther. And this is to show that you're starting to get more speed in here, right? And, and, and pressure on this water as you go. And if we go back over here. That's very, uh, you know, graphically very easy to see. But it all depends on making sure that the palms still feel the tactile sensation of the water. And if you don't, anybody can move their hands fast underwater. So I am my... I'm not a good swimmer, but even a poor swimmer, they can move their hands just as fast as an elite swimmer in the water, mm. but they're not holding the water. Right, they're slipping and sliding. So when we see this area here, Jan, so what's happening in A3? Because we noticed in A3 and in A4, there was a massive, if I'm right, in, when we're looking at your charts, um, mm. there's a massive increase in the velocity, as you'd mentioned, the velocity of the hips moving forward. So in the movement, the movement of the body is really speeding up during this time. Is that right? All right. Got it. Got it. And what's causing that? Well, the ability, it's the pressure they're exerting, increasing the force, and the propulsive force is moving, is increasing. And at that position, they can exert the most propulsive force, it looks like. And so what's happening as you move back in this to, to make the velocity of the hips move forward faster, when you, you're in A3, it starts right. to really build because now you're like pushing on the water, right? And you're starting to get more. So you're not necessarily manipulating so much, but you're pushing on the water and now driving yourself forward. Right. And what you were saying, when we look at that pressure field, if, I, if I'm correct here, I just want to make sure I'm right as that pressure field starts moving faster because you're pushing on it, what's happening? Well, you're going faster. You're, 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 you're using the propulsive force more effectively. And I wanna point out, John, the, the picture we showed last time is just one swimmer. Another, we can show other elite swimmers where you see the peak stay for longer, which means that they are now doing exactly what your pads are showing. They're holding their velocity for longer. The example I gave you, that swimmer's peak velocity was just in the middle, around A3. But when we look at other elite swimmers, we would see that peak velocity hold all the way into A4 and at the end. Oh, so, gotcha. So that swimmer had its peak, his peak velocity happening in A3. Exactly. Other swimmers that are better, possibly, than that swimmer would have it longer. Yeah, exactly. That's the part of the article I wrote in uh, American Swimming. They would see impulse being maintained for a longer period of time. And that means you can hold your peak velocities for longer. C can you explain impulse. Um, impulse to the for our audience? Sure. Impulse is force 
multiplied by time. If you can exert a force for a longer period of time, you're obviously going to go faster. And that's what we see the swimmers do. The better swimmers can hold for longer. They can hold their peak velocities longer because they're exerting force for a longer period of time. So we're saying if this avatar moves another step backward in the next frame, they've got a better chance of moving forward even more if they're, if they're as long as they don't lose the grip on the water. Yes, and, and, and that's what you see with the elite swimmers. We don't and, see- and That's why this avatar is built so that the palm is still facing backwards back here right. instead of right. slicing through. Right, and you have four, you have four pads. Mm -hmm. Yes. You had one pad at the beginning. So that I think is visually very appealing because you can see if you, if you increase your force, without slipping, you're gonna get more bang for the buck. Wow, that's really interesting. So the more, now as this starts moving, you'd mentioned that the, 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 the understanding that I got at least was that the water's moving faster and therefore your hand needs to move even faster to keep up with it and then still enough to push off. Yeah, and that's what elite swimmers will do. Mm -hmm. If you're a poor swimmer and you move, stop that water moving backwards and you can't catch up, then you're not going to hold the water and you're not going to get any propulsion. But what I suspect is that elite swimmers, they can maintain the pressure on the water on their palms at a higher speed, at a higher velocity, which is the change in velocity is acceleration. That's why the term acceleration is thrown in because it's a rate of change of velocity, but it's all contingent, John, on making sure you can hold the water. If, right. if you put your hand in and you pull very fast, and we used to do this with our uh, adults to teach them this. We have them stand a couple of feet away from the wall, put their hand in and pull very fast. Mm. Their body wouldn't budge. If they start slipping. slowly and keep speeding up and speeding up, then they will tilt forwards. Right, because they, they, they didn't right up in here in A2 area, right? They, they didn't get a good, grip on the pressure field to yeah, start and then with. the hand was just moving fast and so their body just stayed the same they're just sliding right off of it now as, as this comes back so what we're saying here is that right here in the in the, in the beginning of a3 that pressure field is moving slower than it will at the end of a3 mm -hmm. and it'll even slower than if it was in a4 so as you press back you have to keep up with that pressure field and continue to exert pressure on it. So if it's moving faster, you've got to speed up to keep up with it, plus a little to push off of it. Plus also remember, we want to make sure that that water, we don't direct our hands directly in a straight line for too long because that water is already moving. And that's the whole thing with a paddle boat. The paddle steamer catches fresh water. So all the way through here, and this is why your curves are very effective because it shows that there's not a lot of straight lines. Got You're it. looking for new water all the way through. Got it. So, right. So if you've got just that, 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 that one pressure, right. But you can slide over and get new water as you go. That's right. If you just go dead straight, you have to be very, very, what, what I say, like very, aggressive, very right. Yeah. To and keep up with sure it. The, exactly. And I think better the elite swimmers, can move their hands faster and keep up with the pressure, whereas the average swimmer doesn't do that. I'm just going to let this go through a cycle here so we can see it. Oh. There we go. Now you can see, think, you can see the acceleration think, as it goes back. John, I think the caution for coaches is to tell the swimmers, don't try to move your hands as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that when your hands are moving fast, you still hold the water. And that's why paddles, I think do a good job reinforcing that because the paddle being a little bit larger will give them that feel of holding the water. I was reading an article the other day. I don't know if it's true or not, but they said that the first person that invented hand paddles um, was Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw that too. I thought that yeah, was very interesting. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's a very interesting thing. Gigantic things, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very funny so this has been great um and and i hope our audience got a lot out of this because to me it's a fantastic idea and understanding 
of how you need to push on that water to get the most out of it. Yeah. Uh, we still don't know a lot, John, but definitely we can, you know, it's uh, one of those one of those great mysteries, the difference between elite swimmer. I think you become an elite swimmer by repetition. And that again protects you to your mind program. Right. Right. It has to be the repetition. Yeah. Right. And building those patterns and, and right exactly. over and over. But really making sure that while you're doing the repetition, this back to what you're saying with almost when you're pushing in the water, you know, you need to make sure that you stay engaged with that water. And when you do the Absolutely. repetition, your mind needs to be engaged Absolutely. with what you're doing. Absolutely. And, you know, you can't just think that your hands are going to do something. Right. Just putting in the work doesn't do it. Not at all. And this is the whole thing. If you're looking at golf and tennis, every time, and I'll tell you something, there's a very interesting video clip of Kelly Slater, who is the world, was the world surfing champion for many, many years. And he said something that I also talked at the coaches clinic. He said, when I'm on a wave, I feel like I have to press down no matter what angle the wave is. I'm pressing down on my board on the wave. Hmm. I think that is exactly what the good swimmers do. They're pressing down on the moving water. Right. Right. Yeah. They're keeping that, that when you press down water has a property, if you push on it, it tends to push back. Right. And, so and right where you push on it, push it. And here's right. the world you get champion. He didn't know what he was really talking in terms of, hydrodynamics but he felt like he was getting the most pressure mm -hmm. no matter what slope the wave was he was pushing against that at right right that's where he right that, and that's causing that pressure field wow exactly. that's that's great um and so thank you so much for joining us today pleasure, jan that, that's absolutely fabulous appreciate it oh, pleasure